we have a huge number of people that don't really know the business. They're not marketeers, they're not digital marketeers. It's like sharks, they see blood, they attack, right? So, and this is not just in digital marketing, it's everywhere. If you don't have a high barrier to entry in a category, it's, it's a matter of time before you see so many different people jumping in, trying to make money. So many people that enter this space with no experience, no professionalism, and they hurt the overall image, right? And they don't do uh, work for them, uh, and they destroy, you know, the whole environment. Today we have the legend Konstantinos. Nowadays you can come across all of these AI tools, AI videos, AI hacks videos, but I will be introducing you to the father of these hacks, tricks, techniques, reels videos, Konstantinos himself. Three, two, one, I think we're live. Welcome to the fifth episode of the Sober Media Podcast. And today we have the legend, Konstantinos. And you know, the nowadays you can come across a lot of these AI tools, AI videos, AI hacks videos. But today I'm going to be great. Today I will be introducing you to the father of these hacks, tricks, techniques, reels videos, Konstantinos himself. Can, can, you, can you do that? Can you do that voice for us? Uh, 50 AI tools. Oh, no, 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 no. I have many, I have many of them on my, on my videos. People can check them out. <laughs> Website number 58. That's the legal studio. Okay. So what's oh, up, man? What, what are you, uh, you know, how would you introduce yourself? All is good, uh, busy, but productive and creative. So can complain. Yeah. So what, what are you up to these days? Do you have an agency or something? What do you, what, what do, you do for a living? Yeah, Simply Digital is a marketing agency. We are working with multiple businesses, yeah. uh, mostly in the digital marketing space, SaaS platform startups, AI platforms. Many of the big companies in these needs are, you know, are working with us. Uh, we create content for them. We run their ads. We help them with their marketing funnel. Uh, so that's one side of the business. And I do several other things like, you know, consulting, investing in startups. Uh, I'm having uh, several uh, digital courses that I offer to people, educating people different matters. And now we're uh, preparing also uh, a high ticket program uh, for a very selective uh, number of people uh, that we will be helping them to scale their content and reach a specific number of, uh, of income per month. So hopefully uh, we're going to be launching that end of April. So, so uh, what's your team? What's the size of your team? Sorry? What's the size of your team? The size? Yeah. It's 30 people right now. We're 30 okay. people. Uh, remote? Uh, not uh, half of the team is remote and the rest is here in Greece. Okay. So let's start with the AI thing, you know, because that's something which you made a trademark of yourself. And I know back then when back when you were making AI videos, no one else was, you know, the, the te te techniques and new AI tools that you were introducing, that was something new. So where did that came, that, that idea came to you, you know, of making a whole series about AI websites that feel illegal to know, <laughs> you know? Well, you know, I just wanted to start setting the things that I have in my, uh, in my bookmarks, uh, that I'm aware as, you know, as, uh, as a marketeer, the things that I understood that people are looking for. And um, when I entered, when I started creating content for TikTok three years ago, yeah. I realized that I had to uh, create something simple and digestible for people. Yeah. So that's how I started, you know, doing simple things and just um, putting tons of knowledge in a small video. It worked. So I doubled down and I created different series, different hooks. Um, of course, by experimenting, by, uh, you know, uh, trying different things and unleashing my creativity in different fronts. That's how it, it, uh, it evolved. Okay. So was it an intentional effort? You know, you wanted to make your presence, you know, was it an intentional effort? Sorry, I didn't understand what you said. I'm saying, was it an intentional effort? You know, you want, you wanted to grow your agency and your account with that? Of course, nothing that I did was an accident in my professional career. Everything was, uh, I had a, I had an, 
uh, you know, some kind of uh, instinct about a direction that I wanted to take. So I was trying. I was trying to adjust in the specific direction. And then, based on my knowledge and my experience and what I was getting as a feedback, I was uh, trying to make it work. So there's no accidents. There are no ex accidents in uh, entrepreneurship. So how did you come to digital marketing? You know, how did you realize that digital marketing was something that you wanted to do in life? I'm a marketeer. I used to uh, work in big companies. I do. I uh, I'm in the marketing field the last 24 years. Uh, so for me, the you know the digital marketing space was the natural evolution of marketing. Right, okay. everything is happening online. Uh, after the, the launch of social media platforms, things have changed. Brand building is taking place now through social media instead of television and traditional marketing mediums. So I had to be in the digital marketing space. I launched, I launched a startup eight years ago, and uh, that's how I had to train myself in digital marketing so I can make it work. And later, I came up with uh, Simply Digital and several other things. So how do you learn it? Where do you learn it from? Or is it just in, uh, intuition? Sorry? So how did you learn it from? Where did you how did I learn it? Yeah. Sorry, give me a second. So uh, I, I am self-taught, to be honest. I didn't have any teacher or didn't take any digital marketing course. But I've studied marketing. I have an MBA in marketing okay. and business. Uh, so I have a post uh, MBA um, training in different kind of things uh, in terms of marketing. I've worked, as I told you, as a as a marketing manager in several companies. So marketing is my thing. I have a, a wide experience in that. So all I had to do is understand the technical parts of digital marketing, which is you know understanding SEO, uh, how ads work, um, and all the terms that you know make digital marketing a different kind of environment. But the essence is the same. It's still marketing. Yeah, definitely. The essence is storytelling, basically. And, you know, whatever the platforms may be. Okay. Yeah. So, what, you know, it's like a crazy trend these days, especially in the last few years, that everyone's making an SMMA agency. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. it's like a cheat code for them to be successful or whatever, to make money. But, you know, what's the biggest problem that you see? with agencies and, you know, how they do not are targeting the right strategies. You know, what are the right strategies that marketing agencies are not doing? Well, first of all, uh, we have a huge number of people that don't really know the business. Okay. They're not marketeers, they're not digital marketeers. Okay. It's like sharks, they see blood, they attack, right? Yep. So, and this is not just in digital marketing, it's everywhere. If you don't have a high barrier to entry in a category, Yep. It's it's a matter of time before you see so many different people jumping in, trying to make money uh, in this territory. So yep. low barrier to entry, you find some freelancers and you call yourself an agency day one. It's not that hard, right? Yep. But uh, and that's why, you know, many people have a very bad image about digital marketing in our space, because there's so many people that enter this space with no experience, mm -hmm. no professionalism, and they hurt the overall image, right? And they yep. don't do uh, work for them. Yep. Uh, and they destroy, you know, the whole environment. But there's, there's, for the people that really have skills and they're trying to make something significant and build a business, the biggest mistake that I've done as well is to try to do everything. So they're trying to be everywhere. They're trying to do uh, so many different things like SEO, digital marketing, graphics, content creation, uh, right. taking dogs in the park, whatever. So whatever is needed. It doesn't work like that, right? Uh, you have to be very selective about the things that you can offer. Okay. Maybe at the beginning, try to do a, you know, a variety of things so you can have a, a better sense and experience of where you can really provide value, what is profitable for you, and uh, where is easier for, easier for you to get leads. And then double down on that because specialty and expertise is something that you don't really find easily and it's always paid the best. So that's what I would say to people. First of all, be serious about it. Don't be a, uh, you know, somebody with zero knowledge trying to, you know, to pretend to be an expert in something. Be humble 
and speci- uh, you try to specialize in one two things maximum. Okay. And you know what? What is what is the specific speciality of your agency specifically? Ads? Content. Content. Okay. Content. So content for us is the is the number one. Um, is the is the core of our DNA, let's say, and we walk the talk. That's why I'm also in every single platform. I have created content for what everything you can imagine. I have succeeded in every single platform, so I can really help the people that I coach and I uh, work with to know what is the recipe for them, right? If, uh, either if they're students or the businesses that uh, hire my agency to work for them, we're trying to help them by making them stand out with their content, creating something unique, and scaling their entire strategy around content. Okay. So what does make, a, uh, what, what, what makes a content good content? You know, or the right content for the person? Is there this- the right content is the content that doesn't look like marketing. That's the right content, and that's the right marketing strand- strategy always. So it's, this is not my quote. This is from somebody else who said that, you know, the best marketing is, that, is, the, uh, is the campaign that doesn't look like marketing. So if you, many people see my content, they don't really realize why I create the videos that I create. There are several categories within my content that serve different purposes, right? Okay. So I have light content, which is recruiting content, try to, to increase my following. I have nurturing content where I try to educate people about specific things, showcase my, our knowledge, attract them and bring them in my funnel. And I have other stuff that you know serve different purposes. So you need to know why you create what you create, be consistent about it, but most importantly, be knowledgeable and don't try to sell like most people do through their content. Okay. Uh, for, for example, let's, you know, let's dive a bit deeper into this. For example, I came to you and you know, I'm an author and I'm someone who wants to grow in, in my coaching career or my speaking career. What specific advice or content or strategy would you give me? The formula or whatever, you know? Strategy about what? Uh, about how to grow my presence and all my, monetize my content and grow my business eventually. Well, it's not one size fits all kind of approach. Okay. I don't know you. I don't know what you do, what you do. Okay. So I don't know what your expertise is. I don't know what are your skills. So everything when it comes to content uh, needs to elevate what you already know, your skills, your expertise. Uh, your uniqueness, you need to find an identity and start building on that, right? Yeah. So there is a process for everything. Everything starts with who you are, what you're trying to achieve, what is the end goal, what you have unique versus others, and uh, find your ideal demographic, your idea, the ideal person, uh, per, you know, per, per, uh, personality of people you want to attract, mm-hmm. and then define the strategy that gets you there. Uh, we model success comparing to other creators, We see what's happening in your environment and your industry. And when trying to build a brand that is the ambassador of your industry. So if you're in podcasts, for example, you need to become the ambassador of podcasting. You need to be the evangelist of that. I need to be able to see you and think about that. Like some people see me and think about digital tools, AI stuff, online hacks, I became the synonym of this category. Many times people send me a message and tell me, tell me about this video that you did this or that or whatever. And it's not my video. It was from somebody else. But whenever they see it, they don't realize it's not me. Because whenever they see this kind of videos, they think of me. Right? So this is how you brand the category. You become the synonym of that. So for every single professional who wants to achieve anything with content, that's the that's the path. So how do you achieve that? By making more content on that specific niche or subject? I just answered. <laughs> you okay. didn't realize. I just answered. So you find all those things that I said. Okay. You become the brand ambassador, the ambassador of your industry through your content. Hmm. Okay. That's how you do it. So, of course, so content you- strategy is a huge matter, right? It's a it's an entire course. I have a course okay. talking about that. Of course, of course. What you do, how you approach it, how you find ideas, why you find ideas, how you create your videos, how you start the videos, what not to do, what to do. 
there are you know there are tons of things you can we can discuss about this matter, right? But in general, is what I said. You need to become the 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 synonym of your category. Try to promote your category without even caring if you're going to succeed as a brand or not. Sure. So uh, in recent 2024 trends, which platform do you see has the best ROI return on investment on ads? You know, which uh, platform specifically do you think has the best? You ROI? mean paid advertising? Yep. 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 Well, again, it, it's not in one uh, size fits all kind of answer. In marketing, for we D2C. need to understand. For D2C. We need to, um, sorry? For D2C, direct to customer, you know, uh, for product based marketing. Again, it's not the same for everybody. Okay. There, okay. Are, there are huge differences per sure. country, per market, per period. Sure. It's completely different. In some cases, TikTok might be the best. In other cases, YouTube ads might be the best. In other cases, uh, remarketing through display advertising on Google might be the best. In other cases, Google shopping ads might be the best. So I cannot really give you one answer, right? And that's why in performance marketing, as we call it, we study the, the client, who you are, what you're trying to achieve, what is your competition doing, where you're coming from, which is very important. We don't have the same strategy for somebody who starts now and hasn't sold the thing versus somebody else who is just starting to make their first sales or they want to go to the next level, right? So there is no clear answer for that. And we have seen differences uh, through the years. Sometimes, you know, Meta is the cheaper solution to see some things. Sometimes you need to combine things together, right? Because something is complementary to something else. So that's how it works. Sure. So, dude, Firstly, uh, another question is that uh, what's your strategy for, you know, agency's strategy or planning and where do you want to, you know, ex how, do, how, you, how you plan to expand your agency in the next coming year or two years? To be honest, I don't plan to expand my agency. So okay. we are doing very specific things for a very specific group of people. I don't want to become an, an uh, you know, a huge um business that doesn't really have a personal connection with the clients and cannot really serve them properly. And the agency part is not uh, my first priority as a business. I, okay. I want to do different things. Sure. So that's why I'm keeping it. Don't get me wrong. It's a seven-figure business, right? The marketing sure. agency is a big business. Uh, but for that size, I'm good. I don't want to grow further. I don't want to do more things. I'm fine with that. I'm trying to grow my overall brand and do different things. Sure. Uh, okay. And how do you see AI impacting the overall digital marketing uh, space? You mean the role of AI? Yeah. Well, obviously it's changing everything we know. It's taking over in content creation, in copywriting, in video creation, in podcasting, in editing, running ads, there is nothing that it cannot do right now. And we're just starting. So especially for the people that, um, as I said before, are be be uh, below average, they're going to have a problem, right? They're going to they're gonna go out of the equation, I believe. Because what AI is doing is eliminating mediocrity. That's what it's doing. So the exceptional people will remain. And the people... Those people are the people who have the understanding also to use AI for their own benefit. So from, from being 8 out of 10 in terms of skills and performance, now they're going to 9 because they're using AI properly, doing more, being more strategic, accelerating operations, right? So that's what will happen. There will be a bigger difference between those people that have low skills and the people that have more skills. That's what I believe that will happen. Sure. And how much do you spend per month on the AI tools? If you want to share that. I'm Sorry? Amazed. How many tools do you spend? How many tools do you buy each month? AI tools, subscriptions do you have? Me personally, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I know. Zero money, nothing. I don't nice. spend a dime. Yeah, but I don't cool. spend a dime because it's me. So I get everything for free. <laughs> if I reach right. out to anybody and tell them, you know what, I want your tool for free because I want to check it, they're going to give it for free. <laughs> so 
I don't have to pay anything. I've tried everything and I keep experimenting. Of course, I don't want to use everything. I don't, it's not relevant for me. There are millions of AI tools out there. I cannot really use everything. I just use the basic stuff that, you know, are uh, useful for me and uh, excite me as, at the first glance. When I see them, I'm like, oh, I need to check that. Okay. You, uh, you, have, you, got, you, you have got nice books out there in the background. So which book are you reading these days? Yes, I have several ones. The one that I'm uh, reading right now is this one. It's from my friend and partner, Noah Keegan. This is the founder of AppSumo, by the way. Okay. It's called Miliodora Mil Weekend. Okay. And it's a really, really uh, good practical book of how everybody can, anybody can start a business, a seven-figure business within a weekend. I love it. Within a weekend? It's really oh, good. Wow. Yeah. Oh, nice. That, that's cool. That's cool. Okay. It teaches you the principles. It teaches you the how to go and get it. You know how to be specific and and try specific things. It's not theoretical, right? Oh. It has some practical ideas and insights. So it really it's really something that you know fits my mindset. I love simplicity. I love things to the point, not you know fluff and uh, things without real real meaning. Sure. I know this is another general question, general question. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. okay. Uh, and this is another general question, a general question, but you know, just for to get your answer on it. Uh, how do you think one can conquer the attention economy or one can actually win on the attention economy? If there's some principles, you know, some basic generic principles that you want to highlight or talk about. Well, you know, I think there are three elements for that. The first one okay. is be authentic. Okay. You need to be authentic. So okay. people can really see inauthentic, you know, inauthentic people or pe people that are acting being something else for too long. And it re it's not really engaging. You need to be authentic. The second one is being knowledgeable about what you want to teach. Sure. Again, people understand who is really, you know, uh, getting their insights from a book or reading or copying another content creator or whatever, it will show. It might not show on your videos, but it will show when they invite you in a podcast, if they invite you in an interview, if you need to write an article, it will show in a client meeting, right? You cannot pretend for long. And the other one is consistency. So the, the best teacher in anything you do is experiment and do that again and again and check again. And, and why didn't it work? Oh, the thing that I did on Thursday worked. Maybe if I did this idea with the same way, it would be equally successful. So if you have run 2,000 experiments the last year, right, by posting 2,000 videos, you have a huge pool of insights, uh, videos that didn't perform, videos that performed, and your knowledge and your skills are way higher than anybody else who hasn't created or who are like, oh, I don't yet have the best idea about a video. Let me wait for another week. And at the end of the year, they have published, I don't know, 20 videos, 30 videos. You cannot become better with that. So you need to be consistent. You need to, to, to keep pushing content out like your life depends on it. And uh, eventually you're going to improve and you're going to see the numbers growing. I, I, don't I don't know any creator that I've met the last three years who is still in the game and still pushing content out, who hasn't grown significantly. So even creators that I, I'm looking today and I'm like, how the fuck did this guy grow? Mm. I didn't expect him. He was really bad when he started, really bad. But yeah. he stayed in the game. He kept pushing content. He failed, he failed, he failed. He kept pushing, he changed his style, changed again. Now create something that is really unique and it works. So that's how um, you find your way, you navigate your way through content creation and grabbing people's attention successfully. Sure. So, you know, I, let me just tell, tell you about myself. I'm a young startup owner. You know, I just started my agency like a few, uh, I think one year ago, maybe a few a months ago. And we focus on motion graphics, you know, storytelling through motion graphics. That's our main uh, specialization. Other than that, we are open to video content. But we do not, uh, you know, diversify ourselves overly, and we do not go to ads or SEO at the moment. 
okay so what uh, advice would you give me on how to get you know how to overall scale my craft as well as scale my business and agency and overall be a leader in my agency as a motion graphic agency you mean yep yep well first of all you are in a category that is super saturated right there are too many people doing that i get at least um i don't know 10 dms per day from people asking to uh to edit my videos to make them better uh to give me some samples for free or whatever so uh there's too much competition in that part but again there are very few that really are good in what they're doing they're really next level in in what they're doing so if you are next level hmm. if you are next level how do, you, prove how do we know it. that how do we know that how what how do we know that we are next level or not well you, you can if you go to a person like me yeah. who's already at a specific level of videos right okay. and tell okay. them you know Costadinos, i don't care about you hiring me i want your honest opinion okay. about my videos do you think that this is pro level fab stuff sure. Or am I considered uh, still an amateur? Sure. Should right? We do that? Should we do that right now? Why not? Sure. Why not? Let me, let People me. answer if you ask honestly. And you don't really go every single time, oh, sir, please hire me. Or uh, give me $500 or whatever. Right? Or give me this or sell, tell me this. And you do it in a proper way like you asked me for a podcast. You came to me and you asked for a podcast and you have a small podcast, right? And I said, yes. Yeah. I have like 50 requests for podcasts every month. But I said yes to you. But So it's a matter of how you ask and making a genuine question. And you're going to know. Yeah, makes sense. So let me, you know, let's just do this for the podcast. It was fun. Let me show you a video. You know. Uh, to share... To Okay. Uh, can you share? Can you see the screen? I almost hear the echoes of his frantic yelps. Maybe I've become accustomed to his brand of chaos and now I'm a bit nostalgic for it. You know, there's something strangely endearing about his cowardice. Life's just not as entertaining without him around to attract trouble. Yep. Yeah, it's, uh, it's freezing, but uh, you can send me later and, uh, you know, I'll send you my feedback. Sure, sure, sure. You, you were not able to... But it looks, it looks, it looks good. Okay. It looks good. Okay. Uh, okay. But it's for a very specific uh, type of, you know, of execution, this one. I mean, could be cartoons, could be pages that, you know, run as with motion graphics only. Like Two Sausages, how, how it's called. You, do you know the page? Uh, two Sausages? Yeah, let me tell you the name. Uh, it's huge, and they do nobody sausage. It's this one. Okay. Okay. Nobody sausage. It's really cool. I mean, check check the graphics. Oh wow! Oh wow! Yeah, that that that's cool. <laughs> yeah. So this page has like eight million followers, and it's just you know bringing to life memes mm. in a motion graphic way. Mm. And it's really funny. So uh, some people can use it for the, the, for this kind of purposes. Yep. 
Yeah, actually, it's one of those purposes as well. So, you know, this was a very high te- high intensity work. One of our, you know, it's, it, it was like fifteen thousand uh, dollars. This specific video for one of our clients, and uh, which is which is uh, you know, which is a good enough money for our you know, when it comes to our, our agency. So it took us like how much you said? Fifteen thousand dollars. Fifteen thousand. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's a complete part of it. This is a trailer. It, it was a four minute yeah. video, but yeah. So it, it took us like two months and we were a team of three of, you know, three people. So yeah, anyhow. Uh, so we were talking about uh, uh, marketing agencies. What's one thing people do not understand about marketing or and how would you differentiate between marketing and sales? What is marketing and what is sales? Yeah, you how, how would you differentiate? You know, most people, you, they unify it. They don't understand the difference. What, how would you explain it? Well, marketing, marketing is mostly trying to create an image, right? To okay. grab attention. Okay. It's, it's the science of grabbing attention and building an image and using this attention to build and to create an image, okay. to create, uh, to evoke emotions, okay. to create a specific picture in your head about me, right? While sales is understanding what you want, first of all, listening. Sure. Sales is listening. Many people confuse sales with talking and talking and trying to sell and pushing people. That's how bad salespeople do their job. The good salespeople are listening actively. And based on that, they're trying to find the path of least resistance towards the sale, right? by having uh, strong points, making strong points about that, tack- uh, tackling any objections and uh, going to the sale. That's, that's the, an, an overall differentiation between uh, sales and marketing. But you need both. And great marketeers are great salespeople as well and vice versa. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So uh, what, I, what I have read and seen is that marketing is like the sales for uh, a few months later, you know, sales is like uh, the, the the pitch you do at the moment when you see someone in a problem and you pitch them a solution. That's sales. Whereas in marketing, you have to you know identify the problem and then present the person with a solution. Uh, I don't really agree with that. Okay. Why though? And sometimes, you know, marketing is all about pulling the consumer instead of okay. pushing the consumer, right? Trying to push the, the to, to, to go to the consumer and sell directly. Marketing many times is trying to pull the audience towards us okay. rather the opposite, right? And marketing is a, long, a long-term strategy. Definitely. It's not yeah. something that, you know, it's just a firework. Yeah. Sales can work really fast. If you have a product, yeah. you have a uh, demographic that you want to sell to sure. you take five people and you start selling right marketing sure. doesn't work like that yeah. it's time to register a message to create an image to build a brand right okay. to establish yourself as something so that takes time definitely definitely Who, who's your favorite marketer by the way who do you look, look up to sorry who's your favorite marketer who, who do you look, look up to uh I love the practicality and the work that uh, Neil Patel has done in the digital marketing space. I love Neil Patel. Neil Patel. I've learned yeah. too many things from him. Okay. Yeah. And on a different kind of uh, personality, I love Gary Vee. I believe that you know he's a pioneer in terms of uh, how a big of a, a evangelist was about content. And he was one of the people that really inspired me to see content in a, from a different perspective. Sure. Um, and then Seth Godin is a great, a great guy who is a really uh, top in, in terms of, you know, seeing the next day, having some great insights about marketing and uh, doing that in a very, very nice, beautiful way. Exactly, Seth Godin. <laughs> yeah. Love his work. I, I, so those three. Yeah. Gary Vee and Seth Godin for me, you know, to talk to digital marketers who I look up to. 
and you know honestly speaking we talked about how you responded to my email it, it was such a surprise that you responded so well because you know i, I was in my head i was like this guy ain't gonna reply you know it's just i'm just trying up out my, i'm just playing out my cards because honestly speaking you're one of those people who genuinely i generally look up to because you were the pioneer of this ai trend which is now going really crazy you started back in two, 2000 i think two years ago back in 2021 take it when, when there was no one no one there and you left it when everyone started doing it so you know you, you you came you conquered and you left for the right time shows the legacy that yeah, yeah. i'm still here i didn't leave <laughs> you do i i haven't seen those videos anymore uh part 28 29 50 100 or, or was it just a part series which is for a while i have seen those are you here i lost you for a while oh, oh. i was saying that uh i haven't seen those uh websites that feel illegal to do part 78 videos anymore for a while now ah you mean the series yeah, yeah. okay uh yeah i feel that you know people need something different uh you need to evolve you know be, i still do websites okay. it, it's just the title that is different uh, the other day i just created a video you know legal illegal feel, uh, <laughs> three websites that feel illegal <laughs> you know from time to time i might do one of them but it's not my main focus i try to do different concepts you know, uh, I get tired as well yeah. doing the same things all the time. Like it's almost, it's already three years. So yeah, yeah I believe that, you know, by experimenting yeah, and agree. evolving, it's the only way yeah. to keep people's interest uh, high. No, but you know, the fun thing about your persona was that, you know, you seem like a very macho and a very masculine person. And when you're talking about websites that feel illegal to know, it felt like you know, a nerdy thing. And when you could buy a macho, you're talking about something which is kind of nerdy, it, it felt like a really cool persona, you know, on camera for a viewer. It, it felt, it felt yeah, like, it's, you know, yeah, it felt really in cool. content, in content, you know, this plays a big role, especially in the short video culture where, you know, uh, you are, uh, you, you recruit new people every single time, new people that haven't seen you before. So it's really important to have, a per, you know, a persona that really uh, is appealing to people. So you can really become a personality that they create an image about. So they see uh, the physique, they see uh, a reaction in the face, they see, the the vo they, they hear the voice, they see the colors. So everything, you know, creates a personality, a persona. Yeah. Like it's you know, on movies or TV series yeah. and they, people uh, like or do not like a specific character. So everything plays a role. Everything plays a role in this kind of uh, definitely, effort. Definitely, definitely. So you know, I think we we had a good conversation. Um, a, a few last questions, you know, then we can wind, wind it up. Uh, the few last question is that: Do you think in twenty twenty four, for example, I'm a person I, I just grew up, I grew up, and I'm all of a sudden really interested in digital marketing. You know, I'm really interested in that. I have tried a few things, and I, it it worked for me. Do you think now is the right time to enter a, a digital marketing space, especially as an agency? Or do you think it's over or you, do you think it just, it's just getting started? Digital marketing, you mean? Yeah. It's, it's far from over. Okay. Okay. What makes you believe that it's over? I, I may, what, what I mean by that is that, the, you know, as agency, the space is getting too uh, saturated and, you know, it might not be the best time to grow an agency from agency point of view, I'm saying, asking that. I don't believe that a saturated uh, industry is uh, is something that will die because it's saturated. Saturated, you know, every single industry that it's saturated and and recruits too many people that shouldn't be in the industry. As I said before, mm. uh, there is always a natural selection, you know, like with people. Yep. Like the people that don't belong in this category will go away, yep. either because they have proved their value, which is not enough. Yep. to be there yep. for after two, three years, yep. or they didn't get what they expected, so they leave, yep. or the marketplace really throw them away because they're not good. Yep. And the people who are serious about that and keep pushing, uh, developing, evolving, uh, evoking changes and bringing changes. I mean, when I entered digital marketing, and I tried to change it. Sure. I didn't try to, to play the game according to the rules. I try to change it. I try to bring my own colors sure. in that sure. and leave my own footprint. And I believe that I did it. Sure. So that's what people that really stay in the industry for too long 
are doing, right? So for those people, it's just, you know, uh, digital marketing is absolutely necessary like eating food. Mm. That's what I believe. Mm. So how do you stay ahead of the curve, you know, when you have so much competition, uh, you know, in the industry like yours, ours, how do you stay ahead of the curve? Well, the, there are two things that you need to do. The first one is, you know, being active in the industry and understand what is happening right now, mm -hmm. testing, experimenting, listen to other people, like the guys that we said before, yep. um, consume their content, yep. uh, see what they're doing, what their perspective is, sure. and then from your own experience and and through the through the process, you get more experience, more uh, more lessons from clients lost clients, leads, failures. And if you are a person who is insightful and you know, has a vision, you can foresee things Definitely. because you see where, where, the th where things are going. You know, economy is doing cycles. Definitely. Things are repeating itself, mm. themselves, right? Yep. So if you are here for a meaningful time like me, yep. you can really expect to see something happening yep. two, three years before it happens. Mm -hmm. So that's where, you know, people who really are staying ahead of the curve are really making moves sure. because they see where the, the marketing is going or the consumer behavior is going sure. because those, those two are the most those important things, right? Yep. What, what are the big players doing? Yep. Like YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, Google, those people own internet, yep. right? And the other one is how the behavior of those players influence the behavior of us as consumers. Sure. Those two things are the things you need to pay attention to, yeah. to understand, you know, where things are going. Sure. Specifically talking about X, where do you see that platform going? X, the Twitter, X, formerly Twitter, now X. Where, where I see going? what? Where do you see the platform going in a few years? Uh, I don't know. It's, con it's confusing, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, X is... Um, is a platform that is very, very much in line with Elon, with what Elon is doing. And we have seen that he's completely unpredictable. He's some, you know, a guy, you cannot really uh, understand what his next move is going to be. Um, but currently it has a huge dynamic. And if he does what he's claiming to do, which is give back to the creators, yep. and probably it's going to be the, the second platform that is trying to give back after YouTube okay. in a meaningful way because, you know, TikTok, Instagram, uh, Facebook is not really doing anything for creators. Yeah. They're paying them zero uh, or close to zero. Yeah. And Twitter is trying, or X, is trying to give back to creators sure. uh, in a meaningful way, yeah. which might be, if, if it's um, uh, feasible from a, an economic standpoint, this can really change the game and become, you know, a place where many, many creators are going to try to win. Uh, but let's see. I'm not sure yet about the uh, the future of X, to be honest. Okay. And where do you see the future? Uh, you know, I have, we have talked about AI, but uh, do you think the content creation industry would be affected by AI? As in the avatars coming and new characters coming? People making... Sorry, I didn't understand what you said. Uh, what I mean is that do you think people creating content like us would they be affected by AI? Or would AI take over people, human beings as creators on platforms? Do you think? Of course. Yeah, as I said before, I answered that before. Okay. Uh, people that are just, you know, uh, hobbyists or are just, you know, mediocre creators or they don't really bring any value in the business, okay. it's going to be easy for them to be substituted by, uh, by AI. Mm -hmm. But people like me or people that are doing that for long, and building a you know a character, and they are they've proven the value. They have a an audience that you know follows them, etc. Sure. I don't see how it's gonna be a big threat for us. Okay. Probably it's gonna be a benefit. Sure. For us. Sure. As I said before, AI is gonna make the gap different, uh, bigger yep. between people that are below average yep. and people who are really trying to be better than average, yep. Yep. and use uh, and use AI as well. Yep. So if you learn how to use it and you are above average, I cannot really see how you're threatened by AI, to sure. be honest. Sure, sure. Okay. 
I think that's good enough. And what final advice would you give uh, to you know just 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 uh, you know human advice? Nothing to do with content or marketing. Just a human advice. What advice would you give to someone who is you're, you're young and he wants to pursue something, especially knowing your your knowledge in AI and you know in overall what's happening around the world? What knowledge? What you know for someone who's young? What should he do? You know how should he find his passion, his purpose? How should he? What should he do? I would say make a plan uh, to experiment as frequently as possible for the next couple of years and see, because, you know, most people at, at, at this age, even me, I didn't have a clue about what I wanted to do, what I preferred, what I didn't like, what is true, what is not true. Uh, so experiment as much as you can. Create content, start a business, uh, run a faceless YouTube channel, uh, experiment with affiliate marketing, start a blog, experiment, start a podcast, invite people, whatever, whatever you can see, start experimenting and see what you like, where you're naturally, naturally talented in, and when you find your vibe, just go all in, but experiment before sure. you go all in, sure. right? So especially if you're young, yeah. you don't really have an excuse of not experiment as yeah. much as you can. So that's my... Mm -hmm. Number one advice. <coughs> do, do you do you own uh, any faceless channels? Any faceless YouTube channels? Do you own? Sorry. Do you own any faceless YouTube channels? I have created several in the past, but uh, currently everything I do is around me. So for me, it's it's not really meaningful to have a faceless channel about simply digital. I have my YouTube channel. I create videos myself, and. Uh, Right now, it's just me so do you think being the face of the brand. Do you think it's a monetizable idea if someone creates like a 50 channels, 50 festival channels? Is it some... Is it... Yeah, there are people that are doing that and, and it works. Okay, okay. Yeah. But it's not yeah. that yeah. easy to make, to do it. Huh? Yeah, it's not that hard to do it, definitely. You're right. So, yeah. thanks, you know, thanks for your time. Uh, Constantinos, it, you know, it, it's pleasure talking to you, and you know, you you were one of those people that I always had in my book list, save list on platforms, videos that I need to go back and see. Thank you, I appreciate tools, it. Tools that I go back, you know, and see. So thank you very much for that as well. Thank you very much for the, your time. I want to take a picture, you know, that's something which I do uh, before we sign off. Sure. Uh, and. Because obviously we are not. There you go. Wait, can, can we do it again? Can we do it again? Cool. Let's start. start. Yeah. Sure. Yep, it's done. Thank you very much for your time. Cool. And I hope to stay connected with you through emails and, you know, uh, messages. And you know, it's a pleasure talking, uh, talking to you and hopefully in a, in a few years to come, we will meet in a, in a summit or two. We, want, we will both be the guests and we will, we, talk, we, will talk, we will be talking about AI and digital marketing and content, hopefully, you know. Sure. Thank you for having me. Take care, my friend. Thank you. Bye. Bye.